Hello everyone, Hyper here, and today's video will be a quick look at the legendary effects that are being added in Shadowlands. Keep in mind that this is still alpha, and the effects themselves haven't been added to the game yet, they've just been data mined, so a lot of these are subject to change. Much like legendaries in Legion, you will have general legendary powers and spec-specific legendary powers. So for the general ones, the first one is Death's Embrace. And this increases the duration of AMS by 100%, and any damage it absorbs heals you for that amount. And this is the same as the legendary effect of the drapes or the legendary cloak in Legion. This one was really good on Blood Decay in certain scenarios, uh, where it allowed you to either prevent a debuff from applying to you for a long time. Back in Legion for Necrotic, this was the go-to legendary um, but especially in raid encounters, there tend to be certain bosses that are very magic damage focused, and for those, this legendary could come in very handy. The second one is Grip of the Everlasting. For 3 seconds after casting Death Grip, you may cast the spell a second time without regard for its cooldown. So essentially, you can get 2 Death Grips as long as the second one is within 3 seconds of the first one. This one would be an okay legendary effect if Death Grip wasn't on the global cooldown. And I have a ton of problems with that, and it probably merits a video on its own, all the spells that shouldn't be on the global cooldown but are because of BFA. Death Gripping two enemies um, is kind of nice in certain situations. Usually one Death Grip is enough. Um, if you need more than one death grip, you typically need a mass grip. Um, so back-to-back -back death grips might be a thing in PvP, but even then, I don't like the fact that death grip is on the global cooldown, so now instead of spending one death grip um, and using one global cooldown not doing damage, you're gonna use two. So I'm not sure exactly where this legendary effect will fit in, but we'll have to wait and see. The next one is Pheromones. You and your minions gain 10% haste while you are inside your death and decay, and enemies damaged by your death and decay have a chance to cower in place for 3 seconds. All three of the specs have death and decay now, so this legendary effect would work for frost as well. However, since you and your minions gain 10% haste, I feel like this is a lot more beneficial for unholy than it is for frost in general. The tremble before me, uh, legendary or talent back in Legion didn't really see much use in general, however there were a few dungeons that were very heavy caster dungeons where you needed a lot of interrupts, that uh, talent was actually kind of alright. And then the 10% haste while in your death and decay will make it so that you want to cast death and decay on single target. And there's quite a few interactions there, so 10% haste for the entire duration of your death and decay is actually pretty huge. Um, so it turns your death and decay from just like a boring ability to into a little bit of a stat boost. Next one is Super Stain, and this is probably one of my favorite general legendary effects. Your Frost Fever, Blood Plague, and Virulent Plague also apply the other two diseases. And this comes from one of the Torghast powers. So... Where do I see this being used the most? In dungeons, having all three dots up on your enemies is going to be an absolutely massive change. Also, in single target for Unholy DK, imagine if you can have Frost Fever ticking on like the boss and if any adds spawn, you get extra runic power, which means that you can spend more death coils to buff your gargoyle even further. So just that interaction alone makes this pretty interesting for Unholy. It makes it a little less interesting for Frost because all you're really getting is a little bit of leech damage from the Blood Plague and just passive damage from Virulent Plague uh, since Frost Fever is already in the Frost DK kit. But for Unholy, I really really like this legendary effect. Moving on to the Frost DK ones. So out of all the ones that are being added, these are a little underwhelming and I assume there are way more to come. Um, the first one is Absolute Zero. Frostworm's Fury has 50% reduced cooldown and freezes all enemies hit for 3 seconds. And this, the source for this, or the inspiration for this, were the Legendary Pants in Legion. Almost no one used those Legendary Pants in Legion. Um, if I remember correctly, there were... There was like one dungeon where maybe you ran it, but other than that, 
you basically never used the legendary pants because they were just better options. Frostor and Fury on a minute and a half cooldown can be kind of nice, but it depends on what you need to sacrifice for it. So they haven't really talked about the legendary system in depth as far as how many legendary powers are you able to equip. Is it just going to be one legendary power? In that case, this legendary power will see basically no use unless Frostrun's Fury is extremely overtuned. Um, if you can equip multiple legendary powers, then maybe this can fit into the Frost DK kit at some point. The next one is Biting Cold. Remorseless Winter damage is increased by 15%. And the first time Remorseless Winter deals damage to three different enemies, you gain Rhyme. This should sound familiar because it's the Frozen Tempest trait from BFA. So this trait was very nice uh, with Breath of Syndragosa Frost DK. And in dungeons in general, getting the free Rhyme proc every time you pressed your Remorseless Winter was a pretty nice quality of life increase and also damage increase. So I'm happy that they're adding this. And then the third one is Coltira's Favor. Obliterate deals 10% increased damage and has 15% chance to refund 2 runes. And this is from Coltira's newfound will, Legendary, back in Legion, which worked the exact same way. Uh, but that one refunded 1 rune, I believe. So this one instantly screams Breath of Syndragosa. Whenever you're spamming out Obliterates to keep up your runic power, or yeah, to keep up your runic power and your Breath of Syndragosa, Getting free runes back just because you're already pressing that button is absolutely massive. So this has a great interaction with the Frost DK toolkit in general. Moving on to Unholy DK. First one is Deadliest Coil. Reduces the runic power cost of Death Coil by 10, and Death Coil increases the duration of Dark Transformation by 2 seconds. And this is from the tier 16 4-piece effect. So your Dark Transformation is going to be kept up a lot, lot longer on single target if you run this. Also, I'm not sure what the interaction will be between reduced death coil cost and how much it buffs your Gargoyle. I assume you will get the full buffed effect. So this instantly to me says Gargoyle build. On single target for Gargoyle, you will get more death coils and you're going to be able to buff your Gargoyle further. For AoE, I don't know if Epidemic will actually increase the duration of your Dark Transformation. From the first read, since it's called Deadliest Coil, I assume it's only Death Coil. So I don't think this will see much use in Cleave or Mythic Plus at all. Next we have Death's Certainty. Death Strike and Death Coil deal 10% increased damage and reduce the remaining cooldown of the file and Death and Decay by 2 seconds. And this is from the Death March legendary back in Legion. So this legendary again saw some use in the Defile build, but it wasn't all that useful other than one or two bosses. I remember in Tomb of Sargeras, it was, um, it was useful on one of the bosses. And in Mythic Plus, if you played on Holy, it was kind of useful. Um, but... Again, I don't know how Epidemic is going to interact with this. If Epidemic affects the duration or the cooldown of your Death and Decay, then this is absolutely massive. Because as soon as your Death and Decay is over, you're typically spamming Epidemics. Um, so getting another Death and Decay back pretty quickly is going to make a massive difference for dungeons. However, if it's literally only Death Strike that affects, or Death Strike and Death Coil, that affects the cooldown of your Death and Decay, then it's a lot less useful because it forces you to spend death coils in AoE when you really want to be pressing Epidemic. One way I see to work around this is to, instead of running Epidemic for dungeons, you would end up running Pestilence or Defile, in which case your only runic power dump is death coil. So in that case, it makes sense to run this legendary. However, if Epidemic just ends up being tuned to where you want to run it for dungeons, then I'm not sure how this interaction is going to work. I really hope that they add Epidemic to that effect. Even if it reduces your Death and Decay cooldown by a little bit less, uh, maybe like 1.7 seconds or 1.5 seconds to compensate for the lower ruining power cost. Next, we have Frenzied Monstrosity. Dark Transformation also increases the speed and damage of you and your monstrosity by 20%. Next, we have Frenzied Monstrosity. Dark Transformation also increases the attack speed 
and damage of you and your monstrosity by 20%. And this is inspired by the 18, the tier 18 Unholy DK 4 piece set. So this to me instantly says Unholy Frenzy. So during Unholy Frenzy, each auto attack applies a wound. And getting 20% faster auto attacks means that you will get more wounds applied during your Unholy Frenzy. So this instantly just screams an Unholy Frenzy build to me. Um, also, if I remember correctly, this only affects you and your ghoul. It does not affect any of your other minions. So it would be interesting if this also affected your gargoyle, for example. Whenever you press Dark Transformation, if it would buff the attack speed of all your minions, that would be a more interesting interaction, in my opinion, than just your and your ghoul's attack speeds. And then the last one for Unholy is Reanimated Shambler. Your attacks have a chance to summon a super zombie that shambles forward and explodes, dealing 124% of your attack power in shadow damage and applying a festering wound to 8 nearby enemies. This one is kind of insane. And this one is inspired by the DK artifact weapon from Legion, uh, which had a Shambler trait, but that one just went forward and exploded in dealing damage. So, interesting. This essentially is might be the go-to Mythic Plus um, legendary effect because you're getting more Festering Wounds and Festering Wounds, especially with like a Bursting Swords build, tend to be your top damage in dungeons and just getting more wounds out um, can make a pretty big difference. So this one is super interesting. On single target, I don't see it being too useful. In PvP, I don't see it being too useful. But in Mythic Plus, this trait is absolutely insane. And again, it will depend on how the legendary system actually works and how many legendary powers you're able to equip. Moving on to the Blood Death Knight ones. First one is Brindor's Might, and this is Death Strike refunds 15% of your runic power spent if it heals you for more than 10% of your maximum health. And this is from the legendary Bracers from Legion. They had the same exact effect. Um, if I remember correctly, this was like by far the best defensive and to some extent even offensive on single target um, legendary effect to use just because you were able to get more death strikes, which is more healing and more damage. So I'm really happy that they're adding this. Next one is Crimson Rune Weapon. When a charge of Bone Shield is consumed, the cooldown of Dancing Rune Weapon is reduced by 30 seconds. Um, that is actually a typo in the tooltip. It's supposed to say 3 seconds. Um, first when I read this, I was like, oh my god, permanent Dancing Rune Weapon of time. But it should be 3 seconds instead of 30. Additionally, when DRW fades, your Rune Regeneration Rate is increased by 40% for 10 seconds. And this is from the 2-piece and 4-piece from Tier 21. This is an interesting legendary effect, and looking back at Legion, um, the tier 21 2-piece and 4-piece were among the better ones for Blood DK, um, so I'm happy that they're adding this back as well. Next one is Gorfiend's Domination. Heart Strike reduces the remaining cooldown on Vampiric Blood by 2 seconds, and this is from the legendary belt from Legion. So Gorfiend's Domination, along with Red Thirst, will mean that you will have an absolute boatload of Vampiric Blood cast throughout the fight. So this might be on par, if not slightly better, defensive legendary than the Death Strike one, um, but I guess it will depend on the situation. Last, for Blood Decay, we have Vampiric Aura. Your Vampiric Blood also affects all party members for 50% of the effect it has on you. And this is from Dragon Soul tier set, but back then it affected your entire raid, not just your party. This I see being really strong in Mythic Plus, giving your entire party 15% extra health and 15% increased healing taken is absolutely massive. There's always those moments on especially tyrannical bosses where the party is just rotting, 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 and your healer just can't keep up. For those moments, this legendary effect will be absolutely massive. Um, so I see Blood DK being pretty good in Mythic Plus if this ends up working out the way I think it will. Anyways guys, those are the legendary effects that have been data mined so far. I assume there's way more to come, especially for the Frost DK. 
Um, so I will make another video whenever they update them and actually implement them in the game. I'll play around with them a little bit and show them off. Again, thanks for watching. And if you have any thoughts or comments on this, make sure to leave it in the comment section below. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.